In this brief video, we'll explore why it is so important to talk to your clients about sex, sexualities, or sexual health and well-being. In the centre of the screen is a lovely little picture about the health benefits of sex, showing all the positive aspects of sex that can be emphasised. Sadly, too often, people focus in on the negatives, especially in relation to people with learning uh, difficulties and disabilities, how it may be a case of, well, don't mention it, and then maybe they won't want to know too much about it. But look at all the positive things that you could be focusing on with your clients. For example, you could be focusing in on positive um, and affirmative sex and relationships or equally um, advocating for your client that they have a right to know about um, sex and relationships, especially sometimes when they're being infantilized because of their learning difficulty. And uh, many of the other sections on here we've also covered in different ways throughout this learning resource. And then it's appropriate to focus on you yourselves as well as practitioners and ask yourself some of these questions, whether you find particular um, uh, sexual language, sexual terminology, sexual practices or orientations difficult to talk about, especially with your clients. Because if you do find that difficult, then obviously it's something that you need to work on and not to impose that on your clients. But equally, from the university's point of view, we'd love to know whether there is anything more that you want to learn and that we could help you with um, in that learning. So feel free to give feedback to your module leaders and your program leaders. Tell them what more you want on the various aspects of sex, sexualities and sexual health, especially ways of overcoming barriers and being able to talk about all of this. In another video on this Spark resource, the one focusing in on holistic care, you'll see that I emphasize there um, the first part of the NMC code of conduct for us all. And if you work through that line by line, read it in relation to your clients with learning disabilities um, or intellectual problems, but in relation to them and their sexual, gendered health and well-being. And in another video in this resource, the one on um, what difference can I make, that's where I explore with you this whole notion of the explicit, the extended plicit model in relation to being able to talk about sex, sexualities and sexual health with your clients. Um, focusing in on them at the centre of this diagram and then looking at you as reflective practitioners on the outside. And then three other great ways in which you can raise the profile of sexual health um, for your clients with intellectual or learning disabilities. First of all, to raise this, help destigmatize it across your whole practice area and just normalize it as part of the holistic care that you're delivering. And that may also mean that you're going to build networks, maybe with sexual health services, get others involved so it can become a two way collaboration. Secondly, from the point of view of education, I've already mentioned that you should be saying to us as educational providers what you want in relation to your learning needs, but also check out the various opportunities that you may have, maybe for practice visits or occasional visits to different types of services, because you may be able to enlighten them about um, good practice for people with learning disabilities and they can enlighten you on their practice as well. And within your own clinical practice settings, look at the ways in which um, you as students at the moment may be able to empower some of your mentors in, a, uh, in the ability to talk about sexual health because they might have been um, educated in a time where it wasn't talked about quite so much. But also look at ways of normalizing sexual health, maybe in your assignments or assessments that you do. And be inquisitive, be professionally nosy and ask your workplace settings how they actually acknowledge sexual health, especially as a holistic dimension of the care that they provide to your particular clients. 
And I'd like to end this section with just sharing with you some inspirational stories from the University of Greenwich. The first one is about Beatrice Kungwengwe, who was a mental health nurse doing the diploma in mental health in the days before graduate status. But she went on to do a top-up degree in sexual health with us, then her master's degree, and for three years running, she was in the general practice awards for implementing sexual health into mental health. In the top right corner is Kay Elmi. She did her master's degree with us, um, focusing on how she could combine two services, a sexual assault referral centre into a general sexual health clinic. And um, her work was so outstanding that she became the UK uh, Sexual Health Professional of the Year in 2012. And in that same award ceremony, as um, shortlisted as finalists, were Professor Catherine Abel, Dr. Roxanne Agnew Davis, and myself, with the course that we developed for the Social Care Institute for Excellence, which I've highlighted further down on the Spark page here. It's a free course looking at sexual, reproductive, and mental health. So, though not specifically for people with learning disabilities, this will be of relevance to you.